Kashif Sadiq, Heidelberg Institute for Theoretical Studies. Predictive Synthetic Retrovirology, a new paradigm for gene delivery. So it's great to be here, thank you very much. Uh, so I'm a computational biophysicist uh, and I'm looking to partner up with uh, synthetic biologists, bioengineers and structural biologists to pursue this program of uh, predictive synthetic retrovirology. So, uh, next slide please. So uh, just uh, in a nutshell really, what is synthetic retrovirology and how can we make it predictive? Well, it's all about developing a computational modeling toolbox which will allow us to uh, see how the changes that we make to uh, the constituents of retroviruses will affect their assembly properties and their maturation properties uh, which will allow us then to control and customize the design and the, and the construction of various retroviral vectors for a number of uh, applications but most uh, predominantly for gene delivery and so uh, of course you've just heard it uh, in the last couple of talks uh, about the revolution uh, in gene editing technology with a combination of that with gene delivery then we really have in the next uh, coming years uh, the potential to reach any cell and any genetic location in any cell uh, with a lot of accuracy. And this could then really be uh, great for biomedical applications. Uh, but of course there are some challenges uh, that are required to be overcome and uh, specifically that's then uh, things like engineering for example um, uh, the envelope proteins of retroviruses to see what kind of uh, um, uh, to see what kind uh, or, of specificities they get and how we can get to different uh, selective target cells but also controlling the time to assembly of a retrovirus because we may want it to be inactive and then want to activate it uh, at a specific time but also most importantly is controlling the size so what kind of changes we would make to the capsid for example which would allow the virus to assemble into a much larger um, uh, particle uh, so that could be very interesting and uh, to be able to follow that so the approach that we've been taking, uh, next slide please, um, is uh, essentially this, which is, oh, another slide please, which is essentially to do multi-scale modeling. Multi-scale modeling is essentially a number of uh, techniques going right from the molecular level, so being able to compute the conformational changes uh, on proteins that you see on uh, the left there, uh, binding, binding kinetics, binding thermodynamics, and then translating that information into macromolecular architectures uh, so that we can construct entire capsid particles uh, and see how the, the changes in their shape occur. But then taking yet again that information uh, and constructing ultra coarse grain models where we really simulate particles as, um, uh, as balls but do it uh, across a scale of hundreds of nanometers for milliseconds uh, uh, at a time to really visualize those assembly processes. So if you're interested to know more about these technologies, uh, I'd love to hear from you uh, after the session. Thank you very much.